the Axis couldn't believe their eyes. American airfields were supposed to stay destroyed. But something impossible kept happening. Bombers would obliterate runways at dawn. By sunset, planes were taking off again. German commanders thought Americans had some kind of secret weapon. They were half right. What the enemy never understood was hiding in plain sight the entire time. And it changed everything. Because while the Axis studied tactics, Americans had already revolutionized something far more powerful. The impossible sight. It's 1944, the Pacific Theater. A Japanese bomber squadron flies over an American airfield. They drop everything they have. Craters everywhere. Runways completely destroyed. Mission accomplished. The Japanese pilots fly back to base. They report total destruction. Command is satisfied. But here's where it gets strange. Less than 12 hours later, American planes are taking off from that same airfield. The same runway that was just a field of craters. The Japanese can't explain it. They send reconnaissance planes to confirm. And what they see doesn't make sense. The airfield is operational fully functional, like the bombing never happened. German engineers in Europe are seeing the same thing. They bomb American positions at night. By morning, Americans are flying missions again. Something impossible is happening, and the Axis powers are completely baffled by it. The pattern emerges. It keeps happening, over and over. Axis forces would destroy an airfield they'd celebrate the victory, strategic advantage secured. Then, 24 hours later, American planes in the sky. At first, commanders thought it was luck. Maybe the bombing wasn't as effective as reported. So they sent more bombers, bigger payloads, more destruction. Same result. The airfields would be smoking ruins in the morning. By evening, they were operational again. German Field Marshal Kesselring called it incomprehensible. Japanese commanders thought Americans had massive reserves of hidden airfields. But that wasn't it. Intelligence officers studied aerial photographs. They measured the damage. They calculated repair times. By their math, repairs should take weeks, sometimes months. The Americans were doing it in hours. British engineers were impressed. Soviet observers were taking notes. Even Allied forces wanted to know the secret. Because this wasn't normal. This was something completely different. The German investigation. German high command ordered a full investigation. They needed to understand what the Americans were doing. This was becoming a serious problem. Every bombed airfield became operational too quickly. German engineers examined their own repair procedures. They were efficient, well-organized, military precision. Repairing a bombed runway took their teams about three weeks, sometimes longer. The Americans were doing it in eight hours. Something didn't add up. The Germans suspected trick photography, maybe fake airfields designed to waste bombs. They sent captured equipment back for analysis. They interrogated prisoners of war. The prisoners just smiled. One American engineer told his captors something interesting. He said the secret wasn't technology. It wasn't some wonder weapon or advanced machinery. It was something simpler. German intelligence dismissed this as misdirection. They kept looking for the complicated answer. They assumed Americans had secret concrete formulas special fast-drying materials, hidden construction equipment. They were looking in completely the wrong direction. What they were missing. The secret was hiding in plain sight. American airfield repair teams weren't using magic. They weren't using secret technology. They were using a completely different system. See, European and Japanese military thinking followed traditional engineering. You assess damage. You plan repairs. You execute methodically. This takes time, 
days to assess, days to plan, weeks to execute. Americans skipped most of that. They had created something called rapid runway repair teams. These weren't traditional engineering units. They were organized like factory assembly lines. Each person had one specific job, one task they'd practiced hundreds of times. No thinking required during repairs. When bombs hit, these teams would mobilize immediately, not in hours, in minutes. They'd arrive at the damaged runway while smoke was still rising, and they'd already know exactly what to do. No planning meetings, no damage assessments, no waiting for orders. Just pure, practiced execution. But there was more to it than that. The American method. The American system was brilliant in its simplicity. Traditional runway repair focus on permanent fixes. Make it perfect, make it last. Americans didn't care about perfect. They only cared about functional. Could a plane take off? Could it land safely? That's all that mattered in combat. Perfect could wait for peacetime. This changed everything. Instead of filling craters with concrete that needed days to cure, they used different materials. Crushed rock, steel matting, compacted dirt, whatever worked fastest. A crater that would take Germans three days to properly repair? Americans filled it in three hours. It wasn't pretty, but it worked. They developed prefabricated steel mats called Marston matting. These interlocking panels could cover damaged areas instantly. Teams would literally unroll these mats over craters, secure them, done. Planes could use the runway immediately. Japanese engineers eventually captured some of this equipment. They studied it carefully, and they realized something important. The real innovation, the technology wasn't the secret. The organization was. Americans had revolutionized the entire concept of military engineering. They treated airfield repair like mass production. Henry Ford had transformed car manufacturing with assembly lines. Americans applied the same thinking to combat engineering. Every repair team had identical equipment, identical training, identical procedures. This meant predictable results. A team in the Pacific could repair runways exactly like a team in Europe. Same speed, same quality. German and Japanese repair teams were skilled craftsmen, each doing things slightly differently. Americans were standardized machines. They'd practiced these repairs dozens of times before seeing real combat. Muscle memory took over. One soldier operated the bulldozer. Another placed the steel matting. Another compacted the fill, like a choreographed dance. The teams could work at night with minimal lighting. They could work under fire if necessary. Speed wasn't just about technique, it was about practice, repetition, perfect execution. And there was one more element the Axis completely missed, the psychological weapon. Fast repairs became a weapon themselves. Think about it from the Axis perspective. You risk planes and pilots to bomb an airfield. Then it's operational the next day. That's demoralizing. It makes bombing missions feel pointless. Why risk your forces for temporary damage? Japanese pilots started avoiding American airfields. The psychological cost was too high. The effort wasn't worth the result. German commanders faced the same problem. They had to choose targets carefully. Bombing an American airfield meant planes, fuel, bombs, and pilot lives for maybe 12 hours of disruption. That's a losing calculation. Meanwhile, American air superiority kept growing. Their planes could always take off, always land, always operate. Axis airfields stayed damaged for weeks, American airfields for hours. The math favored America completely. British military analysts called it a force multiplier. The rapid repairs meant fewer airfields needed overall. Resources could go to planes and pilots instead of building backup runways. Simple, effective, devastating. The lasting impact, this innovation changed modern warfare forever. After the war, NATO adopted American rapid repair doctrine. The Soviets copied it. Today, every military uses similar systems. Modern airfields have pre-positioned repair equipment, trained rapid response teams, standardized procedures, all based on what Americans developed in World War II. The Germans eventually figured it out. But by then, it was too late. 
the war's momentum had shifted. American air superiority was untouchable. Their airfields were essentially indestructible. Not because they couldn't be damaged, but because damage didn't matter anymore. Repairs happened faster than Axis forces could exploit them. It's a perfect example of American industrial thinking applied to warfare. Simple, practical, unstoppable. While Axis engineers focused on precision and perfection, Americans focused on speed and function. Both approaches had merit, but in total war, speed wins. And that's why those Axis engineers couldn't believe their eyes. The answer was never complicated. It was just different. American airfield damage repair changed warfare forever. Their rapid runway repair techniques made bomb crater repair almost instant. Military airfield engineering in World War II reached new heights. The CBs perfected expedient airfield repair methods nobody had seen before. Airfield pavement repair became an assembly line process. Rapid airfield damage repair gave America unstoppable air superiority. Simple innovation, devastating results. That's how Americans won the skies. If you found this fascinating, hit subscribe for more untold war stories.